what keeps most farmers from marketing their crops in the top third if you had to narrow it down to one or two things? In our, our opinion, it's hope. You know, whatever prices we're at today, whether as we saw in 2008, $15 beans and $13 wheat, they're always hoping for better prices. And part of that hope is they're always scared to sell you know, even $13 wheat because if wheat goes to 20, the worst thing is sitting in the coffee shop six o'clock in the morning and, well, I sold my wheat at 13 and it's now at 20. Guy feels terrible about that. So there's always that fear and the hope issue that keeps farmers from pulling the trigger on legitimately strong prices. How much time should producers spend with their marketing plans? Well, you know, I believe once you've got the initial plan in place, and that shouldn't take, you know, an hour or two sitting down with a commodity broker who's focused on risk management, that you need to, you know, five, ten, ten minutes a day is all you really need to do. We want you to keep track of your local basis every day to look for those opportunities in the cash market. So if wheat basis goes from $1.50 under to $25 under, that's a real opportunity in the cash markets to take advantage of that. And it's not good enough for the guy just to ask his buddy, hey, what did basis do today? And the guy says, well, I think it was about the same. Not good enough. Take that five minutes a day every day and chart it yourself. And I can't tell you what the power of putting that pencil to the paper is yourself. But when you feel that hand move on that basis chart and you get up to those good prices, you'll feel that's a good marketing opportunity to sell some wheat. Okay, Mark, if you can, I like your definition of options. Could you give me a brief description of put options and call options? Sure. A put option, in our opinion, is just an insurance policy. And you're going to pay the premium, 20 cents, 30 cents, 40 cents a bushel, to protect the downside. And like any other insurance policy, we want to lose that premium. It's just like life insurance. A lot of your viewers out there will have life insurance. Do they want to lose the premium every year? Or would they like their wife to collect on the policy tomorrow? They want to lose that premium every year and stay healthy. It's the same thing with a put option. When we spend that money, we want to lose that premium and watch the market go up and stay healthy. But if there is a problem, if the market gets sick or has a heart attack or whatever, we're protected. So that's the put option as an insurance policy to protect the downside until you sell the grain. The call option we look at as a lottery ticket. Now, a lot of your viewers have bought a lottery ticket, spent a dollar trying to win $100 million. Did they realistically expect to win the $100 million? No, but they were there in case there was the jackpot out there, they could participate. So when we sold $5 wheat, we bought a call. Now, wheat hadn't been those prices in a long time. We didn't know wheat was going to go to $10 or $12, but we had that lottery ticket, that call option, once we sold the wheat, in case those higher prices were out there. So it's all about balancing the risk and using these options to balance the risk. What is the main problem with options? Well, the main problem with any option you buy is that 85% of all options you buy will expire worthless. So if you're looking at spending 30 cents on a wheat put, it's $1,500 per contract. Each contract at the Board of Trade is for 5,000 bushels. And if you're a producer of 50,000 bushels, that would mean 10 contracts or $15,000 to protect that wheat. So there's that expense out there and knowing that 85% of the time that option you buy will expire worthless. Now one of the things we try to explain in the seminars is yes, 85% of options do expire worthless. But that number doesn't tell us what percent of options had good money in them at some point and you didn't take the money. And I believe that's something we do very well is when we get money in an option to manage that option as an asset so it doesn't go worthless on us. Now certainly there are times where an option will go worthless, but there are plenty of times when even if we expect it to go worthless, there may be a good reason for it. For example, when we sell $14 cash wheat, we may buy a $15 wheat call for a dollar a bushel, $5,000 a contract. Now do we have any realistic expectation that that call is ever going to get in really profitable or get in the money? We have about 0% chance of that happening. But it's worth spending that money every time if it gives the producer the confidence to pull the trigger on $14 wheat sales. I don't have one client that's upset with me that he sold $14 wheat or $13 wheat and bought a $15 call for a dollar a bushel so he has no worse than $12 wheat today in a market that's at $5. So sometimes even though we expect that we're going to lose the money, if it gives that farmer the confidence to make great cash sales, it's worth every penny of it.